Hi everyone, today I want to talk about warnings about redundant constraints. Um, so this this came up in a conversation Simon Peyton Jones and I had this morning about sort of a, only a vaguely related ticket um, that's not really quite even worth linking to. Um, but it um, turns out that it's quite hard to figure out what constraints in a type signature might be redundant. And, um, you know, looking at this gives us, you know, makes us think a little bit about the, the different kinds of decisions that we have to make when engineering a compiler and designing these features in a language. Um, so for several re releases now, GHC has supported um, this, uh, W redundant constraints, which will flag every time we write a constraint that is actually redundant. So here's a really easy example. If I say F is for any a that is in the eek type class and it returned to bool. If I just say fx equals true, then down here, um, we're gonna keep this, this problems tab open so we can see the warnings right away. Um, so we can see here that we get redundant constraint eek a, and that's because GHC determines that this eek a is unnecessary. Um, so that's not really a surprise here. This function doesn't do very much. Let's see what happens if we have two constraints. So if we have eek a and show a, then this whole thing is redundant. Um, if I make one of them not redundant, right now we do need, really need that eek a constraint, then GHC helpfully just says, oh, just, just the show a is redundant. Okay, good. Um, what about this, though? So what if I have eek a and ord a? So down here we get a kind of what I think is a little interesting uh, error in that it says that eek a is redundant. And, and so the reason for that is that the definition of ord a, I'm not going to write it without a comment here, but it's class eek a, I don't want to say implies ord a because actually the implication goes the other way around. When we have, this is called a super class constraint, right? When we have a constraint that looks like this, then it means that every time we have ord a, um, that's going to imply eek a. So if I say f here that requires both an eek a constraint and an ord a constraint, well, that is indeed redundant um, because the ord a implies the eek a, but I think that this is a bit of an odd error because it's not the eek a that's redundant, it's the ord a. This equals um, uh, function, that's a member of the eek type class, not a member of the ord type class. So what if I have g here, let's have the same constraint, and now g is gonna test both x equals x and x is greater than x. So now it needs both eek and ord. And here we get the same error. We get that eek is redundant. And this one is actually more accurate, right? Because here I'm using the ord constraint to be able to, to check to see if x is greater than x. Bit of a silly function here. Um, but I am using the ord constraint, whereas up here, I'm not. What about another case? What if we have the case here h? So h here is going to have, let's say, ord a, a arrow bool, and hx is x equals x. And now we get no warning at all for h. Even though I really don't need an ord constraint here, what I really need is an eek constraint, not an ord one. Um, so in some sense, the ord constraint is too powerful, and yet GHC doesn't warn. So we can clearly see here that there's something not quite right in all of this. Um, here, we really should be complaining that the ORD-A constraint is redundant. Here, we should also be complaining that the ORD-A constraint is redundant, that it should be replaced with eek -A. The problem with this last one, so it's tempting to just say, okay, this should definitely report a warning because we could replace ORD-A with eek -A. Um, the problem with that is that sometimes uh, Haskell programmers like to make essentially sort of synonyms that um, uh, just to gather up constraints. So I might say, I don't know, class show monoid um, a here, and this is going to have a show and a monoid superclass. And then we can also say that anything that has a show and monoid instance also has an instance of show monoid. Um, oh, and it's probably complaining. It need, we need flexible instances for that, I believe. Flexible instances. Okay. Um, oh no, it's still not very happy with this. Show. Oh, and undecidable instances because it 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 says it says this, but if it tries to simplify to this, well, there's more things over here than there is over here. So it doesn't like that. 
Um, so we'll add in undecidable instances. Okay, so now we're back to, to sort of working. We have these two warnings, but nothing else down here. Um, so if we have this, now if I have J, um, and what's a good example of J here? So I could say J is show monoid A, implies A goes to string, and JX is on a show of X combined with X. So that's going to actually use both the show uh, constraint and the monoid constraint. Um, and, I, and I do get a warning. Let's see. Oh, this makes type inference for inner bindings fragile. Um, so that's true. And that's because it says, well, this show monoid could really be written um, as, as show A and monoid A. So let's do what it says. Let's add monolocal binds. I think there's another video that talks more about that. I don't want to get into that detail right now. That's not the, the, the part that I, I want to focus on. But here, so now we don't get any warning saying that there's a redundant constraint here. This is all accepted, even though in some sense it is this show monoid A is stronger than it needs to be. I could just say show A monoid A, and because those are the superclass constraints to, to show monoid, that is actually sort of less of a proof obligation for any caller of this J function. Um, but we don't really want to warn in this case. Does, does that mean that we want to warn in this case? I don't know. It's a little hard to say as we're, as we're designing this. Um, so I'm going to say, let's accept this H. We're not going to warn in this case. It's a little hard to know when we should. On the other hand, this F, it does seem like we should do some warning. But even here, we have a bit of a challenge. So Simon and I were thinking, how are we going to update this to, to get this new implementation? And what's interesting here is that um, to get to, to see, for example, that G or, or some of these other functions have a redundant constraint, we have to look at the function body itself to see what's used. On the other hand, we say eek a orde, right away we know that there's a redundant constraint. And so we might imagine here, as soon as we process the type signature, we say, oh, this is no good. We don't need eek a and orde. Let we, let's get rid of eek a. Eek a is redundant. And then if we only have orde, then when we look at the body, we might say, oh, well, we don't need orde here. Orde is redundant. And then the user might get some very confusing error messages saying that both eek is redundant and orde is redundant. But of course, we can't get rid of them both. We need one of them. Um, and we didn't quite come up with a great solution. So maybe what we're going to do is sort of generate both and look to see if this situation is happening and then suppress one warning before it gets printed. Or maybe we'll just decide, let's not do anything in this case where we have ORD A, but only ORD superclass is used. Um, I think that's probably the way that we're going to go. Um, but it turned into sort of a little interesting uh, uh, set of questions here. Um, and, and I do think that this is a real error. So as soon as I'm, I'm done making this video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a bug about this F up here because it really should be complaining more about ORD being redundant than eek. Um, anyway, I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.